Hey YouTube, Creative Polygon here and in this video we'll be making this simple ink bottle and the pen. So let's get into it. Welcome. So um, we're going to start off with a very simple cube. Uh, if you look at the thumbnail, um, it's going to be very simple shapes. Uh, we're not going to overcomplicate it. So I'm going to start off with a simple cube, normal extrusions. And if there's anything which I do a little bit more fancy than average, I will be letting you guys know. This was just a solidify modifier added with equal. Over here I'm just creating the bottleneck of the bottle itself. Um, I'm gonna keep one and then I'm gonna resize the other one and keep it aside and I'm going to use that as a cap. As you can see here it was just a simple extrusion and then I filled it. Uh, just click F to fill in any edges which are not connected. This was the cap so I just added in uh, two loops on the top and bottom select the faces and then go into select and hit uh, the select checkered and that's how you can select intervened and then I simply just extruded it inside adding a simple bevel modifier to the cap and then shading smooth so that it looks done I noticed that my bevel modifier wasn't working for my cap and I was wondering what's going on and as soon as I started manually beveling and I understood that it's still not working then I had to check for extra edges and that is when I found this extra edge so I'm trying to delete the edge without affecting anything else and delete with edge ring loop was the option which worked and now you can see that my bevel works perfectly so once we do that you just hit shade smooth and it should be done so now we're going to make the label of the ink bottle so add in two simple loops uh, select all the faces around I just duplicated it once you duplicate it uh, press down P in object select mode so that you can um, separate it from its selection. Once separated, I select that label and then give it a solid solidify modifier exactly like we did it for the rest. Here I'm just taking off the top faces so once I bevel it doesn't affect the top and then I add it in segments and then shade smooth and the bottle is ready. I had to re repeat the same thing for the label as well so you just give it a bevel and then shade smooth and there you have it. Um, your label should be complete. Once this is done I'm just simply adding text. Once you create a text uh, press tab if you want to edit what's written and I just wrote a simple ink and I'm just placing it in the center I'm going to give it a solidify modifier just to give it that real small thickness right and then I'm um, over here I'm just zooming in as much as possible and try to just keep it flush with the label So once that's done, our ink bottle is completely ready with the cap. So now we are going to just make the pen for it. These are very simple extrusions. As you can see, it's just a basic cylinder. I'm just extruding it in and outwards and I keep repeating that just to get a simple complex cylindrical shape. So, one 
once that is done I'm just going to create a plane now and I'm going to resize it I'm going to position it to the center and then we are going to work on the nib so just give it its length give it the divisions it needs right scale it down as per needed and if you want like a curve which I'm going to show you in a while so as you can see I fixed that length and over here I just push it in and then I bevel it and if you bevel it and give it more divisions you get that really smooth curve I had to add three more in the center as as you can see it actually has a slight curve to it that is what I'm trying to give so I just select those two and select the rest two and then give it that curve once the curve is given, we can go in, give it a solidify modifier if you need, give it a bevel and shade smooth. And that's pretty much how I model in Blender. Uh, I just give it that for the final thing when I'm happy with how it looks. So when I do give it that, it kind of completely looks uh, done and ready, like as you can see. So it's uh, done and now we're just going to duplicate the cylinder. I'm just going to make it really long because we're going to make the feather now. Resizing and rescaling. So once this was done, I added in loop segments because I know that I will be bending the feather. We're going to give it a bend modifier later on. So a little bit of pre-planning will be needed for this as because I had the final image in my head, it made it much more simpler. So we get a normal plane. Uh, we add in divisions like you can see we're not gonna over complicate the feathers it's just gonna be really simple and fancy so I gave it a normal shape gave it a solidify uh, modifier and then we just gave it a subdivision surface right so you get smooth curves and then I just push it in and there you have it you have one blade kind of looking feather so this was the first time I actually ever used array modifier so that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to play with it I'm seeing what are the options and as soon as I realized that okay this is how it works I put in as many as feathers I need and then I'm soon just going to use the soft selection and then replace it and make it more narrower to the end of it so that's what I'm trying to do here As I shrunk it, it actually went off the middle spine. So I just put it into X-ray mode, selected the whole objects, and then I'm pushing it back slowly, still keeping the soft selection on, as you can see, and then pushing it in and then out. And that's how I got my feathers rearranged. Once I had that, just simply duplicate. I just made it negative on the respective axis and then I put it back in and then I joined it together. Good time to save, so I did that. Now, because we have enough loops, it's time to add bend. So I just made an empty object. I placed it on the axis point I wanted to bend from. And then you can just see that it's a simple deformer. Once you add that, I just gave it the axis and then changed it to bend and put the empty object as a reference and now it's using that empty object and it's rotating around it as you can see so I just played with the values try to get it as a curvy I needed it and once that was done I noticed that the origin point was kind of messed up so I went to object set origin and then origin to object once that's done delete the empty and now it should rotate properly on the z axis once i did that i just moved it to the center and when 
once that was done uh, the pen and the feather is complete so I noticed that the feather is a little off ground so I'm gonna just select all that with x-ray make sure that my soft selection is on and then I'm gradually just going to bring it down This is just manual tweaking to as much as you like. Once that's done, so we can head into the final composition. I'm just uh, looking at places where I can keep all the objects so that they look good. And then I figured out, let's move the bottle cap, you know, place the pen here. And once I was happy with that, I just gave it a floor. Added in a camera, locked in the viewport. These are just manual basic stuff. And if you guys would want, there are many tutorials on how to do this. But if you would want me to show you clearly step by step, I would like to do that as well. I just split the window because uh, uh, whenever you're rendering, you would uh, want to shift one window to your left or right and put it into rendered mode so that you know you can see what you're actually doing and you'll still have one window freely to move so as you can see that the left side shows me how my render is coming up and on the right side i'm just walking so i'm just gonna place the lights turn it towards the object play with the power so all of my creations in blender have a three-point lighting system it's just three lights from different angles so that they cover up the whole object and it looks better over here we're just going uh, i'm just going to select the objects and put in materials right so for the ink i'm just gonna change the principal shader to glass as you can see and I'm playing with the roughness and the color and I noticed that there was an ink bottle which was really dark blue which I have right now so I just wanted to copy that and once that's done I just applied it to the top as well and made my label black and uh, what I was thinking is it would be really cool if the ink actually started glowing right the letter ink so i did that i actually put an emissive on that and then i uh, increased the strength and it was actually looking pretty cool so i was like okay let's keep it that way because i had other ideas for ink droplets later on in the video so i was like let's keep the lighting just like this with an emissive and when i make the ink drops it'll start reflecting more of it so it's it's basically pre-planning all this so if you guys uh, want to make yours so you can have a better plan than mine and uh, you can come up with your own ideas so over here i noticed that i had joined everything in the uh, pen so i'm just gonna separate it by object and i'm just gonna now start applying individual materials to this i'm just gonna make the tip golden right and i'm gonna do that for the spine as well the only difference in materials for this is because it's feathers i added some a little subsurface is that's what it's called and that kind of makes the object a little bit transparent not complete but a little bit so over here as you can see i'm going uh, in selecting all the feathers and then i will just zoom in and deselect the spine once that's done um, i'm just going to apply feathers there you go and i'm just going to give it a very different light blue shade and add in subdivision and subsurface and as you can see that it looks really it looks really cool actually i really liked it and because it was overlapping it got that darker shade in the middle so that looks really nice as well and then when i noticed that that's that's perfect i added in the gold to the spine as well and i thought of keeping the pen's uh, holder as white as well because i'm going to change the background color so i wanted that to be white i changed the background to a pretty red and i'm just finalizing the looks and the colors of all and now as you can see from top view i'm just adding spears i just added one spear duplicated it and i'm adding a bunch of them now 
I played with the sizes and once that's done, select each one and scale it on the z-axis and as you can see you can just press it all the way down and they're just ink spots right so it was as simple as that when i finished that i just selected all of them and then gave it ink made it black and just made the whole roughness all the way down you don't need metallic so and there you have it you have really polished you know reflecting ink so pretty simple and now as you can see that the emissive is actually putting in light on the ink so it looks pretty cool it has that hint of highlight right so once that's done i was still trying to figure out the ink bottle's color i really like the blue over here so i was like okay let's go with that and now it's just a final composition once the whole thing is done i'm just replacing all the objects trying to get a better camera view and then i noticed that Okay, I still have one light in my scene and there you go, that's my second light. Repeat the process, once that's done, align it, make sure that it's looking at the object, play with the brightness and there you guys have it. So it's just me playing with lights again, three lights at the max and I like to give color to my light. So I give basically two cold and one warm that's how my compositions work out so i gave in one blue and one purple and as you can see it's on the right side and on the left side there's a warm color just final tweaks and once that's done I'm going to finalize the strength of the environment and now I'll be going into the camera render settings and then I'll be soon changing it to filmic and there you go that's the third light right so two on the top just to cover it and the third one over here and then I'm going to make that purple so two cold and one warm And I'm adding my resolution and stuff and here's the final render I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we are just five subs from 100 and thank you guys so much for the response on my last video I cannot believe that video did so well and got a hundred views in a day you guys just made my day when I saw that so thank you for your constant support have a great day ahead bye bye